don't forget about the real journey, which is all internal. If you've ever experienced compassion, it's the same compassion that I've experienced. And it's then you're going beyond that layer and thinking, wow, actually, we're all linked. And we're experiencing that same divinity. Compassion, there's not a separate one for you. There's not a separate one for me. You've tapped into it. It doesn't really matter anymore that you're Jane from Ireland. <laughs> you know, we can connect on that level. That's exactly what Guru Amar Das, you were trying to get them to do. And some people, like I said, that's not what they were after. And Guru Amar Das, she said, what does it even mean to respect me? That you're getting to take away and practice this wisdom that I share with you, this divine wisdom. So if you're getting to sit next to each other and you're eating together the same food, mm -hmm. nobody's going to have a special dish made for them just because of your status in life or what you believe, what you think that I'm is. So once you've done that, you are already taking on my wisdom, mm. which means that's how you actually respect me. Don't forget about the essence. The essence, we are all the same. Welcome to the Jabji Sahib podcast. In this episode, we'll be going through the 29th stanza that has been blessed to us by Guru Nanak Padshah. In this stanza, Guru Nanak is having a conversation with a set of yogis. And they start off with talking about their daily practices and how the yogis are living, Guru Nanak is giving them an internal alternative to their external practices. Let's go straight in. First of all, we'll introduce our guest. We've got Jane here with us today from Ireland. Wahiguru Ji Ka Khalsa. Wahiguru Ji Ki Fateh. So Jane will be joining us with this conversation, but... We're going to go straight in. Guru Nanak is saying to us, Pogat Gyan, Deya Pandarana, Kaat, Kaat, Vajahe Nad. So what we're going to see here is, we're going to see a list of different practices that the yogis carried out. So the first word here is Pogat. Pogat can be loosely translated to food. But it's referring to a very specific type of food that these group of yogis would be eating. And so often would be referred to as bhugati. But what that type of food is, that's irrelevant here. But because Guru Nanak is taking these things, but saying to the yogis, and these yogis are us. Because it's those that are seeking and those that want to realize the truth of this existence, that deeper question of who are we? So Guru Nanak first of all starts off with this Bhagat here, this Pandaran here, and then the word Nad here. So these three words, these three things going on here. And the setting here is they've all come in together to eat some food, mm. so communal food. So that is the Pogat is what they're going to be eating. The Pandaran is referring to the person that serves the food. And then Nad here, this is a double barrel here because this is also referring to the Nadi, which is when they were going to all get together to eat, they'd have this little whistle thing in their neck. So that was the Nadi and they would blow that whistle to say it's time to come together and everyone sit here and eat together. So it was a ritual that they all practiced. Like yeah. a dinner gong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it's like a dinner gong. Yeah, yeah. Never used one, but, you know, uh, in our household, it normally goes like this. <laughs> so it's more like, come on, everyone. Okay, well, that was obviously uh, me impersonating my wife. <laughs> It's not how I would normally do it. So, yeah. Anyway, so everyone got their way, basically. So that's referring to the whistle that they would blow to say everyone, all the yogis to come together and eat. But Guru Nanak here is saying 
to us, look, you've all got your rituals that you do. You've got your religious practices, no matter what walk of life you come from. You've got things that you do and which you formed into rituals. And these are all external things, which are great. And rituals play a big part of following a path. And But what Guru Nanak constantly does is reminds us, don't just get caught up in that alone. Don't make that into everything. Don't forget about the real journey, which is all internal. Mm. So that's this constant reminder. I don't know what comes to your mind when we talk about you know, rituals and certain practices, because I know you have uh, a wealth of knowledge in the sense, or wisdom in the sense of experiencing different, you know, walks of life. From a very different background, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, when you were talking about that, the first thing I wondered was, is he actually talking about food? Because when he's saying spiritual wisdom is my food, it's our nourishment. So, like, even in the Gurdwara, we're given the prasad, now mm -hmm. that's physical food, but it's also embodying a, a step towards the guru. And so when you spoke about that, I was thinking, is he actually talking about food mm -hmm. or is it more the nourishment and that which we take in? So that's food, obviously, like the physical food, but it's also the essence of the reason why we're eating. Like mm -hmm. quite often I eat for comfort or I mm -hmm. eat out of boredom. You know, these are empty gestures. And so I feel empty. So uh, but if we're eating in the Gurdwara, you know, it's an intent. Everyone sits and contemplates for a moment what this food is and the hands that have prepared it and the the gesture behind it. So that was for me, that was my first question is, is he actually talking about food or is this an introduction into what you take in? It's probably both, is it? I don't know. Mm. That That's a really interesting take on it and looking at it from that perspective. So one thing when we're, we can never know for absolute what Guru Nanak and how Guru Nanak was looking at something. But if we take into consideration Guru Nanak is somebody that knows that truth and is also then uh, a poet so expresses in a poetic measure in a poetic way so what Guru Nanak will do is he'll see things yeah, so it's not that at this moment you're not drinking this tea or you know this is all happening but Guru Nanak is saying this is an amazing you know practice that you are doing like us we come together we have langar but Guru Nanak is reminding us of the internal journey that goes with this practice. So he's saying that, yes, you eat langar and don't make this only about the food that you're eating. Because if we look at when during Guru Amar Das Ji's time, so the third Guru's time, mm. Guru Amar Das Ji actually went through changing the way the Sangat would um, do in order that he, they would do things. So, for example, first they would come and sit in the Sangat and do darshan of Guru Amar Das Ji. But then Guru Amar Das Ji was constantly observing what is going on and seeing how people are living and practicing. So he went and changed that order and that thing's happening. So Guru Amar Das Ji, while observing what's happening, he said, you know, what I'm going to ask you to do is before you come to see me, I want you to partake in the langar first. Mm. And there was a reason behind that. He saw that the so-called higher caste that didn't, that believed for them a part of their, their way of living was not to sit amongst who they referred to as lower caste, to sit amongst them and eat. Mm -hmm. So they thought and felt it's not a part of their taram. But taram is a very interesting word because what we covered in the previous episodes is that taram isn't something that you can just make up and say 
that, well, this act is dharam. Because in, in Guru Nanak's house, dharam is referred to something that comes from compassion from there. Mm -hmm. So Guru Amar Das, he said, well, you might have created a, a dharam to say, this is my dharam. You know, we don't sit with these certain group of people and eat with them because that messes with our way of living, our dharam. Mm. But Guru Amar Das is saying, well, that's not dharam. Because dharam cannot be void of they are of compassion. So what Guru Amar Das Ji said is, you can come to see me, but if you sit in Pangat first. And Pangat means, literally means a line. So a line is when you all sit in one line, but not you're not to, one is not to, to sit in front of the other. So it's going to be a dead straight line. Mm. Yeah. So nobody thinks, well, I'm a little bit better than them and I'll sit a little bit forward or sit behind. So somebody could just think, well, this is just about eating. Yeah. But it's a leveler, isn't it? It sounds yeah. like it's a lesson. It's the first thing they yeah. eat is humility, that they mm -hmm. have to actually check themselves and just go, we're all the same. Yes. That's a lesson without a single word. And you get fed at the same yeah. time. That's a nice <laughs> lesson. It's, it's a carrot on stick at the same time. <laughs> I never looked at it like that. Wow, a lesson. But I get to have some food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the food is just like this bonus thing mm -hmm. because you're receiving this lesson. Mm-hmm. But And this is what Guru Nanak Dev Ji is doing here in this body. He's saying to them, don't forget about the deeper lessons. Don't just make it about this is just a time that you come together to eat now. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that again with Guru Amar Das Ji is saying to everyone to sit equally, not one's higher, not one's lower. And it doesn't matter as well, even with gender is concerned, because there was a lot of gender discrimination. So it's saying that you're going to be sat in the same hall amongst, you know, the other gender as well. And you're not going to fight against that. Mm. So it was breaking out of, because Guru Amar Das, she actually did a lot of work in regard to, you know, where there were so many different levels of discrimination. And a lot of work that Guru Amar Das, she took further that Guru Nanak Dev Ji initiated. So one was where caste is concerned but Guru Amar Das Ji really focused on this discrimination against women so he did a lot of work towards that and Langar was all a part of you doing a physical act that was helping you break this mm -hmm. break this pattern of thought yeah yeah that I can't be amongst this person or this person mm -hmm. So then when they um, asked Guru Amar Das Ji the question, well, why are we, well, aren't you higher? Doesn't it make sense for us to come and see you first, pay our respects to you, mm. and then for us to go and eat? And Guru Amar Das Ji said, what does it even mean to respect me? And he said, the biggest thing for you as Sangat is, that you're getting to take away and practice this wisdom that I share with you, this divine wisdom. Mm. So if you're getting to sit next to each other and you're eating together the same food, mm -hmm. nobody's going to have a special dish made for them just because of your status in life or what you believe, what you think that I'm is. So once you've done that, you are already taking on my wisdom. Mm. Which means that's how you actually respect me. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so might it have happened in the past that people would come and show respect but have a different way of thinking, a different opinion and not actually want to share or learn, but just to... They were still stuck in their ways. Yeah. Because darshan would mean often... In, in a certain tradition is that if you get to have darshan, meaning if you get to have vision mm. of a true guru, that alone will help for you to become liberated. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And where Guru Amar Das Ji said, well, if you're still holding on to your ways, that is separating you from that, that truth, that mm. this 
light is equally amongst all of us. And this is exactly what Guru Nanak Dev Ji is saying here, is reminding the yogis, reminding us, is saying that you do your rituals, but don't forget Bhagat Gyan. The, the true essence of what you are looking for is the food of spiritual wisdom, mm. which means where you start to recognize the truth of yourself. And we spoke um, off the camera before about Gyanis, mm. what a Gyani is. And Guru Nanak actually gives a definition. And Guru Nanak says, Pranavata Nanak Gyani Kaisa Hoye. Saying so, what Guru Nanak is saying here is, like, what is a Gyani then? Like, Kaisa Hoye, what should a Gyani be like, look like? Not physically, but you know. And then he says, it's very simple. Guru Nanak said, Aapa Pachane Bujja Soye. If you've recognized if you've been able to go beyond your layers mm. and recognize that that source, that light within yourself, which is exactly what Guru Mardas is trying to get these people to do, saying it's it's pointless if you come here and just look at me, mm -hmm. yeah, but you still hold on to those layers of separation, mm -hmm. of discrimination. Because if you're holding on to that, that layers of separating yourselves with these layers of identities, mm -hmm. well, I am this and this automatically makes me here and you there, says then you've not taken anything from me. There's a amazing words by Guru Ram Dashi, if I'm not wrong, where they say that Sevak, Sik, Pujan, Sab Avah, Sab Gavah, Har Har Uttam Bani. Gavya, Sunya, Tinka Harthai Pave, Jin Sat Gurki Agya Sat Sat Karmani. Don't worry, we're gonna translate that. But I'm sure you're enjoying the, I'm loving the, it. the it's sound beautiful. current from the <laughs> yeah. Bani itself. Yeah. You know, so Guru Ramdashti said, Sevak, there's people that come here to serve when they come here to my Darbar to this court. Uh, so then there's Sikh that come as all Sikh are the ones that became initiated and received uh, Naam from the Guru. So there was Sevak and then there was Sikh. Sevak, Sikh, Pujan, Sab, Abhe. They said they all respectfully come to worship in their own way. Mm -hmm. So they come here and they place this worship before me. This is the fourth Guru saying, Sab, Gabhe, they even take part and they sing amongst everyone else. So they're part of this vibration. Har, Har, Uttam, Bani. These divine words that are such elevated words, Uttam, you know, and as you could feel it yeah, then, you, can you know, feel and, it. and you can feel this. Mm -hmm. And Guru Ram Das Ji is not saying this thing. This is all great. You know, when you're thinking, yes, I, I do that. I do that. I come here and sing and this is all. Yes, I come here and worship. Great, great, great. And the Guru Ram Das Ji is saying, just, just, just chill, wait, wait, wait. And then he's saying, Gavya, you're singing. Sunya. Even you listening to then what I shared, what you were singing. But it's really only going to be, they've used the word approved here. It's really going to only, it's, you've really, you've only done it if, like you've done it. But have you really done it? Yeah, is the to question. Sort of own it. Yeah, have you really done it? it? Is mm -hmm. then Jin Sat Gurki Age. What you have sang mm -hmm. is you've made it true in your life. You've money, you've accepted it, and you've sat and you've made it true in your life. Mm -hmm. So have you then broke those layers to recognize that true self and become a Gyanni? Yeah. And Guru Amar Das is saying, well, so in the langar. And don't forget about the deeper essence of it, of what you're actually trying to do here. And yeah, look at your fellow human being and look at we're eating the same food. We're on the same level and we're the same. And they have that same light inside of them as I do. And this was probably, you know, a bigger issue um, mm. back then. I would hope to think but when we do our research 
so much of this discrimination still exists. Yeah. So I, I don't know. And then from the walks of life you come from, if you, there's ever, if you've ever experienced or seen any of this discrimination. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm coming from Northern Ireland, so mm-hmm. um, we are tribal, very tribal. Mm-hmm. You know, there was the whole, would you call it civil war? Mm-hmm. Um, that at one stage there was Ireland and there was Great Britain and then the British came into Ireland and took over and then gradually were pushed out to the point that then there was Northern Ireland, which are still mm-hmm. under British rule and the rest of the Republic. But even within Northern Ireland, there are those who would prefer not to be under British rule and want um, a united Ireland, they say. And then there are those who are staunchly wanting to remain part of Great Britain. And there has been bloody war and bombs and many Mm -hmm. killed and many lives torn apart. And it's much better now, thank God. You know, Wahiguruji has been great to us for most of my adult life. But in my youth, there were still bomb scares and bombs and military trying to keep things under control. And there was a huge divide. Mm -hmm. I was... uh, at one of the first uh, integrated schools, but it was really trying to get Catholics and Protestants, nationalists and unionists together. And there are other schools who who have done that. Of course, they were welcoming everyone, but they were just trying to teach us that actually we're humans. Mm. We're all the same. You might wear a different jewellery and you might pronounce your H or H differently, but Mm. we're all the same. So, yeah, we are poster children for divide. Mm. unfortunately but we are getting there you know um but it is we are a small community i think because most of the world has been terrified of coming anywhere near us Mm. even i lived in england for a few years and my teachers would say i'm never going there because i'd be scared of stepping off the plane and being blown up and it's a strange scenario to have been to be to have been brought up in a state where um well, I didn't see anyone as my enemy, but there was obvious divide mm-hmm. everywhere. And I came to London at one stage to do com- competitions or f- things with, with my training. And we went on the London Underground and there was a bomb scare. The actual, the mm-hmm. train stopped in the tube, you know, and everyone started making eye contact, which is very strange. You know, mm-hmm. normally in the underground, nobody looks at anyone, even though you might be pressed up against them but all of a sudden everyone started connecting and are we going to be okay and I was with Mm. my teacher and a couple of my um, peers and I started laughing I thought Mm. this was hilarious and my teacher thought she cracked what's going on I've said I've Mm. lived all my life in Northern Ireland no Mm. problem I come to London I get blown up but you end up with this sort of charity kala attitude you know that uh, you never know when you might die or you know, it's had that attitude, but mm. it's, it's, um, yeah, there's divide everywhere mm. that, you know, it would be nice to think we're a melting pot, but you still see there's the Chinese community who stick to themselves. We try to integrate, but it's a natural phenomenon and a lot of them don't speak English. So language is often a barrier. Mm. We're getting more and more diversity. We have a Sikh community, which is mm. wonderful. <laughs> Not that I knew much about it for a long time. But mm. yeah, there's a lot of divide mm. um, and we might be rubbing up against each other, you know, like you'd, you'd have a Muslim shop and you'd have a um, an Asian supermarket and various things right next to each other. But it doesn't mean we're actually interacting, mm. making eye contact, you know, realizing we're the same, you know, it's it's there's a lot of divide still. But I think. Gradually, we are getting better. The world is becoming more, you know, digital that you can contact someone at the other side of the world and talk to them on Zoom. Mm. When I was a kid, you couldn't do that. So there's much more integration, but I think it's slow. It's very slow. Mm. So, yeah, I think it's just as relevant now as it ever was. Yeah. So there's a lot of... So looking at that, there's obviously... You know, there's differences and you're not sure about each other. That could be due to cultural differences, not sure how each other do things. And and then there's obviously language barrier, which is a big thing. Mm. But when we look look at this, like what, what the Guru's 
constantly trying to bring into our awareness is whatever these differences are and they exist and that's how that's what makes this creation it's it's made like that mm -hmm. you know otherwise there is no creation there isn't anything otherwise there's just the formless form means that there's going to be all these differences mm -hmm. so amongst all of these differences the moment you start to think well i'm better than them because of our culture because of our language because of our color and this is what guru gobind singh ji spoke about if the first shand of jab sahib so guru gobind singh ji's composition of jab sahib which is how the dasam granth starts with just like guru granth sahib ji starts with japji sahib the dasam granth starts with jab sahib and guru gobind singh ji speaks about these differences this roop rang ar rek pek you know so yes there's these differences of color but the moment i start to say well my color is obviously better than yours and then i start treating you differently because of that color mm. this is what guru is trying to break is that feeling superior and making somebody feel inferior because of these differences mm. you might look different might speak different mm. but ultimately when you then start to think well they should be below me because of this that's what guru nanak is saying that layer that you are carrying is never going to allow you to know the essence that's in you and then in them which is the same mm -hmm. yeah. it's this duality thing yes. kicking in yeah mm -hmm. so then that bhagat gyan deya pandaran mm -hmm. i find this the second part quite you know um so profound so guru is saying that don't forget allow this food to be your true spiritual wisdom of gyan of aap pachane we start to recognize that true self that we've all come from the same place and that divinity is in all of us equally aap pachane bujhe soe when you will then start to bujhe understand and know that soe that one soe is a beautiful word that's used in gurbani throughout for that divine soe is that one bujhe here can be translated literally bujhe means to understand something or to work out a riddle but bujhe here can also mean you now know that one i can see that one within you because i've removed those layers within myself yeah so yes there's differences but i'm starting to see the essence and so that's bhagat gyan and the way i take the second part is daya pandaran is so the person here in the scenario of their langar mm. the yogi's langar is and then there's some somebody called a pandaran who will then go out and then serve this food but guru nanak saying look if you're going to serve this food of gyan of the spiritual wisdom let it only come from a place of compassion mm. sometimes we'll see certain people who get overly passionate and there's almost this force in wanting to tell people something and i've seen it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i can overwhelm actually can't yeah. it can do the opposite of mm. what it's intending you're just so passionate you want to share it you want to so come and join my passion and everyone's going yeah mm. <laughs> get away mm. from me <laughs> mm. Mm. and there's something about that isn't it when you try too hard yeah. something very unnatural about that but then there's the other side of the spectrum when you don't try at all so there's this almost passive nothing um approach to life and then there's this you're trying too hard and it's none of them mm -hmm. and it's this intuitive um sahaj balance middle so this is the apandaran meaning that if i've come to know that wisdom they are is born out of when you see suffering there's if there's no suffering there's no need for there which is what makes up again this beautiful makeup of life is there is that because there is this so there's they are 
compassion would have zero value if there was no suffering. There's no need for it. Yeah. It's born out of suffering. Yeah. If you want to call it that way. So they can only exist because the other exists. Mm. So then the only reason is to have that compassion is then because I'm able to see a suffering. And the only true suffering is not what you're going through externally, not whether you've got a nice enough, enough house to live in or mm. enough clothes to wear, but it's the suffering of if you've fallen into that division and you started to feel now superior or inferior and you've started to now have that divide and you're not recognizing that um, connectedness and that truth. Mm -hmm. So when you're stuck in that and you're now angry just because somebody else is a different color to you, how much do we see happening in this world still today because of color? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's the and in, these are in Western developed countries that yeah. you will see so much discrimination because of color absolutely it's not just color it's looking different mm. i remember i teach a tai chi class in fact i teach all over the place the same tai chi and uh, i worked with a group for something like 18 years mm. and i've lived my life in uniform you know i have a very plain uniform it's easier for people to see when i move when i make movements if i don't have patterns or so i wear blue <laughs> and, uh, and that's it but one day I came to class wearing patterns and just clothes mm. that I bought from Tesco's mm. and this has happened a few times actually through the years and every time my students would say you look foreign they wouldn't say you look different or you look nice or you look like you know you're not in uniform they say you look foreign and I'm thinking I bought this in Tesco's you know <laughs> it's it's just because I was out of my uniform they mm. saw me in a certain way and that all of a sudden, they, oh, you, you know, you don't look the way you normally look. And you could see them being a little bit tentative, even like they weren't sure did they want to study with me that day. And I, I find it very odd. And the thing is, I do have foreign blood. Some of mm. my blood is from Northern Ireland, but some of it's from Middle East mm. and from Poland and Russia. And even I've uh, met friends in, in America from Russia and they said, oh, we thought you were Russian because you look exactly like someone from this particular province. It's amazing how just what we wear, not even the color of our skin or the texture of our hair, but just what we put on. If it's not what folks are expecting or used to, it's, oh, well, you're from a different tribe. Mm. I even noticed it myself at first when I watched the videos and I see Sikhs talking First, I see the turban and mm. the, I used to say it was cutlery in the mm. turban, you know, the beautiful, <laughs> um, the weapons and all the, the that's yeah. paraphernalia, that stuff. Um, and, you know, I'd say, hold on, look, just listen to what they're saying. <laughs> and then, you know, when I get over myself, that the fact that they didn't look like a local Northern Ireland person, mm. I was like, whoa, they're really talking some amazing stuff here. Yeah. But it's just looking different. Mm. People tend to, I think people tend to be tribal. We all live in our little tribes, whether that's an actual religion or a social group or even a family. And we have our little ways. And it's difficult to realize that if you're wearing a different, as I say, like the in, in our part of the world, maybe a Catholic will wear a crucifix around their neck. Whereas if you're Protestant, you might wear a cross. Mm. So you don't have an actual depiction of the crucifixion. And people judge just based on that. But it's like social cues of pigeonholing what's safe, what's not, what's familiar, what's not. And it's just learning what uh, Guru, Ar help me out, which one was the one that made the longer line? Arjun Dei? Guru Amar Das Ji. Amar Das Ji, sorry. Yeah. Uh, formalized it. Yeah. Formalized it. So it's just this, just saying to everyone, or just like he did, that was amazing. He made a physical action gesture, which speaks mm -hmm. far more than a yes. thousand words. He yeah. could stand and lecture them all till he was blue in the face. But he says, look, sit down, have a lovely meal. Just make sure you all sit side by side in a nice row. There were people that then didn't come back to Guru uh, Amar Das Ji's Darbar, to their, to their Sangat, because that wasn't for them. 
They wanted, they were looking for an easy way out. They thought we can just look at the Guru, get darshan, that will help us towards our liberation. So they looked at it as a ritual, not realizing, well, no, this is a way of living, a way of life. And it's not until we take out that. And just to, again, uh, be clear that having all these different, you know, groups of people, ways of life, tri the, the tribes, all of that's fine. Mm. All of that can be very beautiful. It can be. You know, um, that's not the issue. Yeah. It actually makes this world really interesting. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, we're not trying to make everyone the same externally. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to say everyone should have the same rituals. Have different rituals. Have different things that you may have in, you know, like as a necklace. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But what Guru Nanak saying is amongst all of that, don't forget about the essence. The essence, we are all the same. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah. Th and that's it. And that it, actually meeting other people, that's what makes life so interesting. Why is it so interesting sitting here speaking to you? Because you've been exposed to different cultures. You've been exposed to different ways. Be the martial art, you know, lifestyle. Be where you're from. You know, and that's what makes life so interesting. So it's not about getting rid of that, but it's not forgetting that actually we've got something that's the same inside. And yeah. that's where we've come from. And that's that Vah Guru is inside of both of us. And so we can always connect at that level if we were just to look beyond the layers instead be intrigued. Oh, wow, tell me about your ritual or how you do something. It's yeah. almost so simple. People just often don't see the wood for the trees yeah. because we see so many differences and all of the Maya, all of the just infinite variety. And yet it's staring us in the face. We're all yeah. made of the same substance. We're all the same energy. It's all there. And we all influence each other. And, and that's what the next part's about, yeah. where it says, Kata, Kata Vajahenad. I'm going to read this out because, you know, again, the effort that's gone into putting these translations together. So we've got to, you know, showcase it to the Sangat as well. So I've made the primal sound, which is the Nad here, at the heart of everything, which is Kata, Kata, Kata means heart, um, but which is that primal sound is at the heart of everything. We've come from that same sound. You know, as uh, some philosophers will say, if it is the Big Bang the way it happened, we are that Big Bang. You know, I've heard it worded like that by, by certain philosophers. It's not that you come from a different Big Bang. <laughs> we all come from the same sound. We are that sound. Mm. You know, it's at the heart of everything, the same sound current that is giving birth to everything. So it's Kata Kata Vajahe Nad. So I've made the primal sound at the heart of everything, the calling of the sound to each. Remember we spoke about the, they mm -hmm. would have the whistle that was their calling. Mm -hmm. But Guru Nanak saying, as you blow that whistle, don't forget that we've all been called here. Part of this human experience from the same sound. So no. it's, it's indicating the all the yeah. sound current. Yes, absolutely. Mm. That's what it's referring to. Very cool. uh, and it and then the guru goes on to say Aap Nath Nathi Sabjaki, which the word Nath can be translated literally to the master or that one that we've all come from. So the supreme. And then Aap Nath Nathi Sabjaki. Nath is a really interesting word. Nati is a word where they would say, to, like it, it'd be put in a Punjabi sentence. I'm going to say the Punjabi, but I'll translate it. So I'll say, Inu nat pala. So you, what you would say is then, why don't you put a nat in them, meaning like, like a chain or string them so you can then hold on to them to control them. Harness it. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you would yeah, yeah, you'd call say it? harness. Yeah. Like a, you put a harness on a horse. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Basically. So so something that you can so you've got control of them. Mm. So it's saying, but there's that one divine, which is the knot, we've all come from. 
Nati sab jaki. But he's the one that has strung all of us together. And we're all connected. Mm. And I often think about that. Sometimes we can feel so separated. But the truth is, whatever even what I think this body is, a moment ago, where how I'm receiving my oxygen, mm. a moment ago it was outside of this sensory experience of what I call this body. Mm. Yeah. Not long ago it would have been out there. And I never would have thought of that being a part of me. But it is a part of this body. What is even me? So it's talking about how everything is strung together. This entire creation is. Mm. So this very air that's outside of what I call me, which is just this, the boundary of this body. And in the next moment, it's inside of this boundary of this body, which is what makes up this body. Mm -hmm. So it's not separate to this. All of this is this. You know. It's a continuous interplay coming mm -hmm. in and out with each breath. I yeah. wonder, is there a link when you were talking about that? I was thinking of the um, um, air is the guru, mm -hmm. water is the father, earth, the great mother of all, the mm -hmm. end of the Japji Sahib. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, I think a lot about that. Why does he say air is the guru? But it's mm -hmm. this, it's constantly, it's feeding, again, it's feeding us. It's mm -hmm. feeding us life and it is our life force. Um, but of course, like even in our uh, relaxation or how do you say, content, no, meditation mm -hmm. sessions, we focus so much on the breath mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the sound is from the breath when, when we make the sound on, mm -hmm. but it's, yeah, it's, uh, and it's what binds us all together. We're all breathing the same air. Mm -hmm. And in this room, we've shared the same air. It's, it's a binding agent. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just taking that moment to... And we, of making these things into a practice as well. It's just taking a moment to bring that and capturing that in our awareness and realizing how everything is connected. Mm interconnected it's i mean you can't separate anything yeah like on a quantum level we're mm -hmm. just connected so it's not just a concept it's not mm -hmm. just academic and if you yeah. so just look at that with anything you can then apply that not t sub jockey mm -hmm. that one is that that string you could even say that is the actual string mm -hmm. yeah and if you think about like you've got a voice i've got a voice mm -hmm. like it's all the same mm -hmm. and once we start to see this it changes everything mm -hmm. that we're all a part of this one string you know and that one is that string is the nati is the one that is pulling us all you know and we're all it will you know on to the other body on the stanzas that come, which will elaborate on this. So it's always tempting to go into everything, but then we need, I need to leave some of that contemplation for the stanzas that are going to come after this, which will then elaborate on this very specifically how. So, and then it says something very interesting, because then it talks about Red the Sid of Rasad. And this is an interesting one, because this is talking about now, Rid the Sid can be translated to miraculous powers. And some people can get really caught up in that. You know, they think that attaining these certain, what they refer to as powers as Rid the Sid, and one of these just loosely can be reading, say, somebody's mind, mm -hmm. picking up on what you're thinking. And somebody might think, oh, wow, you know, but they're thinking of, of it in this isolated 
egoistic way. I was going to say, if yeah. you feel you have special powers, then you're way in your ego. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. you're actually divorcing yourself from the very thing that's given you those powers. Mm. So yeah, it's a, a a double-edged sword, maybe. Yeah. So I'm thinking, oh wow, look how amazing I am for being able to read your mind, and th and then how that makes me feel, like that it's a level of it's a certain level of pleasure that you experience from these type of things when you start to pick up this these little things within this existence but and what the guru says is avra saad avra means other saad means taste but it's saying that this is a very secondary taste or it's not the essence of connection to that divinity because the essence of when you start to connect to that oneness is this ultimate bliss. And it's not this little moment of pleasure. And I was thinking, why has this been thrown into this mix here? What an odd, I thought initially, what, an, what a switch of a topic. Yeah. And what came to me was that I could be so caught up in that, that becomes my ego. Mm. And instead, it doesn't allow me to see this Nati Sabajaki that we are all connected. And it's breaking me away from this realization of oneness. Mm -hmm. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. And it's I'm getting caught up in something religiously mm. or whatever or spiritually. I'm thinking I'm... I'm now growing spiritually. Oh, because I could read your thoughts. Look how amazing I am. Mm -hmm. I'm spiritually elevated now. And the Guru saying, that's not how, that's not what it means to be spiritually elevated. What it means to be spiritually elevated is it doesn't matter from what walk of life you come from mm -hmm. and what your work is. When I don't see that and that doesn't divide me in the sense that that doesn't allow me now to see you less than me mm -hmm. and I can still see your essence where you've come from and that's just an outer layer that's what it means to be spiritually elevated that what you think you are now spiritually elevated because you can do that is a very secondary taste which is a, it, that's just another form of pleasure mm -hmm. and it could be quite an extreme form of pleasure so it the way it makes you feel because it makes you go deeper and deeper into your ego because so, you, an addiction yeah 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 and it's actually making me think oh wow mm. i'm so much better than you because mm. i can do this yeah. Like you're this little human just buzzing around wherever you are, mm -hmm. you know doing your thing whatever you do for work mm. and um there's me you know, I'm so spiritually elevated reading your mind. And and that is like such a um, a deeper degree of delusion of thinking you are now um, becoming spiritual. Mm -hmm. There's lots of pitfalls and traps, aren't there? Remember, when something is now playing into our ego, the one thing you want to look out for is it making me feel now more superior? Am I seeing others less than me? Because I was thinking about, obviously this is a conversation between yogis, but I made clear right from the beginning that I want to make it relatable. Mm. So, because with, with the yogis, a lot of them would potentially, some of them would get caught up in that field of the, 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 the SIDS where they, it becomes about this competition almost. Mm -hmm about who has now been able to accumulate more of these specific powers. Mm. And I was thinking about, well, okay, I used one example of potential picking up what you're thinking. Again, probably not going to be very relatable for a lot of people. And but so and I was thinking, okay, what's more relatable then? Another big thing amongst the spiritual community are, for example, um, not needing much sleep. And that's probably a lot more relatable. This comes up a lot in spiritual communities, which I will say, don't make that your measure. In, I, I know this 
whole bragging thing. First, it used to be a thing with not just the spiritual community, but generally in the Western worlds, when somebody was taking their uh, careers very seriously or became obsessed with their careers, they would then brag, yeah, we only sleep this much because they're so dedicated to their career. Mm. But you find that within spiritual communities in Sikhi as well. And I and then I wasn't thinking about speaking about this, but when you started explaining how is it this or is it that, you know, you're not quite sure. Is this now an ego trip mm. or is this actually was somebody experiencing grace and divinity there? So what I would say is let's just take somebody because you will find people bragging about only sleep this much and that makes you more spiritual. What I will say to that is from my experience of see, of being a part of this this path even the Sikh community now since 97 so how many ever years that is now 26 27 years about 27 years mm -hmm. I would say there's very few people where they naturally need a lot less sleep now naturally need a lot less sleep now and that's because they're in such a meditative state generally now mm -hmm. Yeah, because their, you know, their heart rate, everything will just, they would be, their system is in such a balance because they generally, they're able to just sit and go into that meditative state, which then you are getting that deep restfulness that you, your body requires, yeah. even whilst you're awake. What I've realized is on this path, the, those people are very rare and few. The Guru said, Many times that these people are rare, that have really reached these states, not specifically to sleep, because Guru never makes that into a measure, but he just generally says, don't oversleep. Mm. So where Guru Tek Bahadur Ji will say, Ustat Ninda Dautyage, Koje Padner Bana, Jananak Eho Khel Katanha, Kinhu Gurmak Jana, this this game, this play is very difficult of getting that balance where you go beyond slander, you go beyond praise and you find that inner balance. Mm. Generally, it's this competition and it becomes that ego. Yeah. And it's I, I've actually seen people fall apart where they've forced and they thought that they are spiritually elevated now. They've reduced their sleep drastically and I've recently I know of two people that have actually ended up having to be in a mental hospital for a week. Um, this is just, you know, two people, that's a lot if you think about it. It is, yeah. You know, to it's... end up in such a stream yeah. situation and that was linked to then thinking they don't need to sleep. Mm -hmm. uh, three people actually I know that have had a mental breakdown because of it. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, they thought they were spiritually so elevated now. And it's being very careful that these things don't become our measure of our growth, spiritual growth. Our spiritual growth is based on, for example, how we are generally responding to life situations, how balanced we still remain, mm. our emotional intelligence, you know, to look at that, how erratic are we? And then basing it just more on these things of, if, if that discrimination has reduced, that superior feeling has reduced, these things are often making fe people feel more superior. And then they ask each other, you know, oh, you're still sleeping that many hours. And they make somebody else feel stupid. And where they're not spiritually, or, or I don't even want to use the word spiritually, but their body's not yet in that state to have such a reduced amount of sleep. And then they're going to be thinking is, See, I'm not, I'm, I haven't got enough grace yet. Yeah. Because, but th that's not how it, that's not the measure of your spiritual growth anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is, I think, a very important topic. It's asking that question. Mm -hmm. Did I, did I start to feel more divisive? And where did I start to feel that others are, are less than me because of how amazing I am at this practice? Or was it? very graceful was there a lot of connection there mm -hmm. like for example like when we 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 did like a little retreat some months back and 
a lot of people ex- uh, shared their experience where they they didn't feel a high. Mm. It, they felt this background buzzing of love. And that lingered, they said, for a while. That's lovely. Gosh. <laughs> and, and I would say, so that's why generally I've had moments, even say in a Keaton, where I have felt very high and I have come down mm-hmm. and I felt drained. And then I realized, actually, this isn't about that. Mm-hmm. We're looking to feel more grounded and full. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what that's that connection. Mm-hmm. So Ab Nath Nati Sabjaki read the the Avrasad. It's this experience of that we're all interconnected mm-hmm. through that one nod, yeah. one current sound. It's equally amongst all of us. Our essence is the same and that's the essence. Sanjog Vijog Doe Kar Chalavehe Leke Abhe Pag. This is really interesting and, and it's talking about this play of, of of life, of how it works. It's saying it's based on Sunjog, which is when we um, unite, when we meet. Like today, we met today um, for the first time uh, in person. Mm-hmm. It's been online otherwise. Is this So life, this is what life's made up of from the obvious meeting of things. And then this is more of an obvious meeting. And then there's there's also Vijog and then there's separation. So there's life and then there's death. You know, there's Janamang Tammaranang Guru Arjan Devji talks about. There's this coming into this world mm. or something appears and takes form, something new. So that could be looked at as Janamang and then there's Maranang and then there's obviously something coming to an end, something dying. You know, there's that inertia, that sleep, that then there's then we wake up again and there's that Janamang. There's this play of life that is Sanjog and then there's Vijog. There's the meeting of something and then there's the separation of something. Mm. Everything is based on that. Dwe kar chalavahe, dwe, these two things make the kar, make this whole what we call life makes this way and jalabahe means this is what is basically running everything mm. yeah so leke means account and so i'm just going to read this out again because i think we've done a fantastic job yeah so so it's saying so the way we've interpreted it is that the play of the one's creation so which is the god the god is the way the play you want to call it and that's how we've got to that word uh revolves around the the dynamic interplay of union and separation union being sanjog separation being vijog so then with our actions which is the leke the account yeah so based on the way we are the little access we have of will of the way to live influence yeah, should we yeah, say yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, is is leke abhe bag based on that with our actions is determining then the trajectory towards either thereby shaping so either being sanjog or vijog mm. then shaping our destiny it is the bag and so what we're saying is there's going to we're going to be doing things where we feel united to that divinity, to that oneness. And then we'll do things, we'll get stuck in a layer and we'll feel separated. And that's the play of life. We'll feel connection, we'll feel disconnection, connection, disconnection. Mm. And there is, and then obviously, and then hopefully one day that play finishes and we're only just... You're just hoping. <laughs> yeah, in that consciousness and watching the mm. game. And there is only that... Uh, connection there is nothing but the connection Mm -hmm. taking that responsibility of how will be falling in and out of that realization of the gut gut what did the nath nati that everything is strung together Mm -hmm. and then we separate ourselves there's this little me this little ego there's the you and then the separation and then 
is this inferior spirit. All of that comes in and that's talking about the individual separated from the truth. Mm-hmm. Wrapping this up, I was just thinking that, you know, all I could look at is, is the outer differences and then create this separation, even now with you sitting here. Mm. Or I could look at the truth. If you've ever experienced compassion, it's the same compassion that I've experienced. Compassion is compassion. And that is that then realizing that connectiveness, that connectedness, I make up words sometimes, <laughs> you know, and, um, and it's then you're going beyond that layer and thinking, wow, actually, we're all linked and we're experiencing that same divinity. So compassion, there's not a separate one for you. There's not a separate one for me. You've tapped into it. Something that's accessible to me, something that's accessible to you. It doesn't really matter anymore that you're Jane from Ireland. <laughs> you know, we can connect on that level. If you experience c- compassion, it's like, yeah, have I experienced? Yeah, it's the same. Yeah. So that makes us then connected. And that is then in that moment, it's Sunjog, and it's going past all of it. That's exactly what Guru Amar Das, you were trying to get them to do. And some people, like I said, that's not what they were after. They'll have to wait it out yet, maybe whenever that time comes. Mm. And it's to realize that and feel that connection. And uh, what I want to do with the last part is the last two lines. My experience of it is it's almost this moment of it's a practice that the Guru's given us. That's how I take it personally, you know. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Guru saying, okay, you've been talking, you've been contemplating, you've been discussing, you've been reading this. How about if you try something? And this is saying, this is something practical now. So the Guru is saying, take a moment. Why don't you just stop and try this? And then the Guru says, ah, this. Just surrender. Mm. And ah, this means to just bow with that humility and surrendering to the truth of how everything is interconnected. And it's saying, ah, this. Feel it now, what you've been trying to understand and then saying, and then it's, then it's emphasizing it to saying, well, who, who am I surrendering to? Saying, this are, are this, to that one, to that divinity, to that oneness. Come and realize it. Don't think, just sit in it and realize that everything is connected. Mm. Are this, this are, are this, to who? Because the brain still asks questions, well, who? And he's saying, well, to that one that is odd, that has always been there, mm. that has always existed. Odd literally means beginning, but it's allowing us to know that something has always existed, even before time. So to that, why don't you surrender to odd? Anil, someone that is beyond colour. Neil also is a count, is a met. So like we have a thousand, we have then a million, we have a billion. So this is all more, this is also a form of count. So saying the one that is outside of that account. Count, countless. Of, yeah, it's countless. Is Anil. Mm-hmm. So it's saying bow to that one yeah, that isn't this much isn't this much isn't this much but it's just boundless mm. Ad anil anad that has no beginning Ad without a beginning and then anahat comes from the word hatia someone that can be destroyed meaning then can come to an end mm. there's no such thing for that one there is no destruction for that one, that formless, 
that is within all of us and it's surrendering not in duality surrendering but surrendering to the point of where it becomes your experience and you come to know the formless Melt as an experience it. that's yeah. it so this is what this is for me is just a pure practice mm -hmm. so and then it's jug jug eco ves throughout all the ages there's something that has never changed it's always stayed echo the same that one has always been that mm. in that same verse verse means the clothes that we the, the form that we take on saying has always been the same yeah. so i would say to the sangat try this as an actual meditation as a practice where you even put your hands together and take that moment and just say ah this Ah, this. This air, ah, this. Ad, anil, anad, anahat, jug, jug, echo ves. And then the recitation of Gurbani doesn't have to be a ritual. You can say, I actually experienced mm -hmm. ad anil anad anad here we go beautiful and that's our 29th stanza and that's whichever direction we were taken <laughs> we were taken so thank you thank for being you part of this journey my oh. pleasure i'm so happy to be here why do okay sangat ji wahiguru ji ka khalsa wahiguru ji ki fateh wahiguru ji ki fateh if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guruji's message. Link is in the description below. Vaheguruji ka khalsa, Vaheguruji ki fateh. Vaheguru